Good evening and welcome to my very first webinar. It's a word I've, I've never heard of uh, until very recently. Um, basically, it's a talk based on my book, if I can show it to you again, Secret Underground London. I've only got eight copies left. It's out of print. But I'll tell you how you can uh, uh, buy one of the last eight copies uh, at the end of my presentation. Um, this was originally planned as a three hour talk. Um, so what I'm probably going to do is, uh, is uh, shave it down to two webinars. Uh, we're going to start with the London Underground. I'm not quite sure where we're going to finish. Um, it really depends on uh, how quickly I, I nip through the slides. So I'm going to turn my ugly mush off now uh, and we'll start running through the slides. Right, Underground London, part one. Now, what is London? Uh, well, as far as I'm concerned, it's, it's anything that I fancied that was in, within the M25, uh, as you can see uh, on that map. Um, anything within the M25 boundary, but uh, if I thought it was particularly interesting, such as the mines at uh, Godston and Merstham, uh, then I was uh, quite happy to just nip over the M25 boundary. So it's it's roughly within the M25, but not everything is. Right, uh, we're going to look at types of sites and some specific sites. Uh, a lot of people have a lot of interest in disused tube stations, the ghost stations as they're, as they're commonly known. So the first part of the webinar will deal uh, with the disused tube stations. Then we'll look at London's deep level shelters, uh, uh, Surrey deep shelters. We won't get on to all of these today, uh, but we will get through them all in time. Uh, I'm not going to read them all. Uh, uh, you can you can read them if uh, uh, or you can go and look at the YouTube later and see some of the sites that uh, I will be covering. Uh, right. So we're going to look at uh, closed underground stations first. Uh, I'm really only going to, we're going to be dealing with uh, uh, stations that were actually underground. So not necessarily stations that were on the underground network, were on the, but uh, were actually on the surface. Uh, so we've got uh, stations like Wood Lane, British Museum, Town Hill, Tower Hill, uh, Oldgate East, St Mary's Lords. The, the, there are about 40 or so of them. Uh, and uh, ending with uh, one that's actually closed very recently, Charing Cross. Uh, on the Jubilee line, closed on the 19th of November 1999. A very interesting station because you can still run trains into it. Uh, and if uh, any film company uh, want what looks like a current underground station, then they uh, uh, pay to have uh, uh, Charing Cross on the Jubilee line uh, brought back into use. Um, and I think they pay a lot of money as well. Right, a 1921 map showing the locations of the stations uh, so I've, I've actually highlighted them all, but we'll, uh, we've got on the, uh, the Piccadilly line, York Road and Brompton Road uh, and Down Street um, on the district line, St Mary's and Oldgate East on the Met, Swiss Cottage, uh, Marlborough Roads, Johnswood. Uh, and of course, we've got Oldwich as well, uh, which is one that will feature quite heavily. Right, we'll take a look at Wood Lane Station now on the Central London Railway, and uh, uh, that's where it is. It was between Shepherd's Bush and East Acton. Uh, it was actually the first um, underground station or the first disused underground station that I ever visited in the mid-1980s, uh, and we'll take a look at uh, some of the early pictures. Um, that's what I first saw when I uh, travelled uh, uh, along Wood Lane on the bus, Stanley Heaps, um, famous frontage, uh, which was there for absolutely years. Uh, I, I first took an interest in the underground in uh, the late 1960s, mid-1960s probably, uh, and I remember uh, Stanley Heaps' entrance was there then. It was still there uh, until fairly recently uh, when they built the Westfield Shopping Centre. And... Um, uh, you can see, in fact, part of the bus terminal at the west, uh, the Wood Lane Shopping Centre, uh, behind the building with the the hip, the brick, uh, the brick building with the hip roof, 
uh, is now a bus station. So that actually got saved uh, and everything else went. Um, the London Transport Museum agreed that they would take one of the roundels. Uh, uh, and as far as I know, they did. Whether they put it in uh, on display or not, uh, I've no idea. Perhaps someone uh, could tell us that. But uh, that has very, very sadly gone. Um, that's what it used to look like in 1927. Uh, there's the, uh, the Stanley Heaps frontage there and that massive great bridge that takes you into the uh, exhibition on what became the, the BBC television centre. Uh, and that bridge uh, uh, or, or the arcaded walkways, which are on the far side of the bridge, uh, they stretch for about a quarter of a mile uh, onto the end of Shepherd's Bush Green. And it was uh, uh, a public way into the exhibition uh, with uh, it was arcades and all sorts of interesting things going on, on on what was a very wide walkway. So that's what it looked like in 1927. Um, there's a, a plan of Wood Lane Station. Um, we've got four platforms. Um, two are on the surface, uh, as you can see there, and two are underground. Only one of those platforms, Platform 3, still exists today. Uh, and if you travel out of uh, Shepherd's Bush, uh, you will actually go through uh, the remains of Wood Lane Station uh, if you can spot it as you go along. Um, that's how I, I found it uh, in March 1980. And uh, for someone who's taking an interest in uh, disused tubes, to actually get into uh, a, a closed station and find something like that with all the signage still in place um, was absolutely amazing. I, I, you know, I was I was a young boy then, and 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 I must say I loved it. Um, I would also say uh, I'm not an urban explorer. All these visits were done with permission. I'm not saying I always asked the man at the top, but I always asked somebody uh, uh, who worked for uh, the company. So every, every visit was done with permission. So uh, that's, uh, if we can go back one slide, uh, that is platform four, uh, which was the line that goes into uh, Wood Lane Depot. Um, sadly, that has totally gone. What's happened to the signage? I haven't a clue. I, ho I hope it's been saved. Uh, along with the posters on the walls, uh, all dating from 1947. But how do you save something like that? When you when you demolish something, when you fill it in, um, the posters are all going to go as well, which uh, which is sad. It would nice. It would be nice if they could be preserved. But I've always felt, uh, as a photographer, the important thing is to record things with photographs. Um, if they get demolished after that, uh, then at least you've got uh, a record of what was there. Um, that's the uh, uh, the linking subway. Uh, let me just go back a couple again. Uh, that links platform uh, three with platform four. So it's quite a long subway. Uh, so that links to uh, the platform that is still operating today. Uh, and uh, as you can see along the wall, um, more wonderful 1940s uh, posters and the distinctive green tiling uh, 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 still in place on the walls. Uh, now, there's, there's, there's the platform again, but this time a train came in, uh, which was my luck. Um, and uh, I spoke to the driver, and, and he was quite happy for me to stop and take photographs because I was supposed to be there. That's the thing. I wasn't trespassing. I, was, I came in with a member of staff. Uh, I wore the, the right sort of orange jacket, uh, and he just parked his train in the platform for five minutes and uh, gave me a chance to take a picture of it. Um, you've probably heard about the movable platform. Um, I'm not going to go uh, into the, the history of that, um, but the, uh, the, the, the movable platform, which swung out of the way uh, when a, a train wanted to go into the depot, uh, that's where that would have been located. Um, uh, passengers boarding a central London train at the new platform forum in, in 1920. Um, so we, we have got some old pictures. No, no old pictures in, in, in my book. It's all new pictures, all uh, beautiful colour pictures. 
Um, I've only got eight left, so if you'd like to buy one, I'll tell you how later. Right, uh, the station that was never built, um, North End or Bull and Bush uh, is, is the name of it now. It was located, or it would have been located, uh, between Golders Green and Hampstead on the Charing Cross Houston and Hampstead Railway, Northern Line, uh, to you and me. Um, they started it, uh, construction was started, uh, but it never got completed. Um, there's the entrance today. Um, it formed a blast proof entrance building above the lift and staircase uh, uh, adjacent to Hampstead Way. Now, this lift and staircase was not part of the original entrance because there was no original entrance uh, to North End Station. That was never built. Uh, uh, the, the station was later used to provide uh, a floodgate control center for London. So this is a new access point uh, to the old uh, North End Station uh, uh, so that uh, uh, the tunnels and the uh, flood control center uh, could actually be used. We'll take a, a look at some of that in a minute. Um, that's the bottom of that, of the stairway. Uh, there's uh, quite a lot of steps down. Um, so this is about as far as the construction uh, of, of North End Station uh, would have got. On the, uh, on the left is the, uh, the bottom of the stairs and on the right uh, is the lift, <coughs> which has been decommissioned uh, an awful long time ago. So uh, that's uh, well and truly out of action now. Um, we've got a blast door sealing off the floodgate control room uh, from the west rest of uh, what became the North End Emergency Centre. Uh, so a Cold War blast door uh, for those that uh, uh, like blast doors. Uh, there's the original uh, floodgate controls. Uh, they, uh, they, they date from uh, World War II, uh, where they were installed in operations room in Leicester Square. Uh, and when the new uh, floodgate control center was built at North Lane. Uh, this panel uh, was actually transferred from Leicester Square uh, to North End, where it can still be seen today. Um, that's a location of the mechanically operated uh, floodgates, which were controlled uh, from uh, this floodgate control center. And there it is today. Sadly, the graffiti artists have got in. Um, it's a great shame. They walked down one Christmas day uh, from Hampstead, where the uh, the line comes to the surface, uh, all the way to Wood Lane, um, up the, the stairs, into the flood great control centre, and left their mark. Great shame. It won't happen again. There's, there's better cameras now, um, but at least the thing is still there. Um, the battery room below the floodgate control centre, uh, quite a lot of this was live. Uh, again, I stress I was there with permission. Uh, a man from uh, Houston, Andy Butler, I think his name was. Are you listening, Andy? Uh, you may you may well be. Uh, uh, he took us there. Um, he's moved on to another station now, uh, but he took us there twice uh, and had to be a little bit careful in, in this room because quite a lot of the circuits uh, are still live. Um, Right, so this is actually uh, looking along uh, the platform. Um, we had to be very careful uh, uh, when we got into the area of uh, where the, uh, the live rails were, uh, because although people did know we were there, it's, uh, it must be very frightening for a driver uh, if he's coming along and he suddenly sees torches flashing around and uh, flashes from cameras. Uh, so we were very, very careful. This was uh, uh, part of a proposed emergency network control center uh, uh, which was built after the war cold war control center uh, but in 1955 all work uh, on this ceased uh, we hear about this in the cold war all the time uh, work was being done on on buildings and uh, uh, things change uh, and and work stops rotor is obviously a a good example um, and, and there it is under construction uh, uh, on the northbound platform or where the platform had been uh, in 1956. You can see they built a wall, if you see on the left, uh, uh, to wall off the track from the platform so they could actually use 
the platform area. The, the platforms, I'm not sure if the, I think the platforms were built, but they were removed uh, and uh, they used the space uh, to, uh, to build this control center. Now, this is where the platform would have been. Um, the site of the North Pound platform looking north towards Golders Green, uh, destined never to be used. Um, you can see uh, on the right the, the cross passage uh, between this platform and the southbound platform, platform uh, and the, the open space uh, is just used uh, for the storage of permanent way materials these days. Uh, there's one of the unfinished stairways to the lower lift landing. The landing was never built. So what you've got here is a stairway up to a blank wall because uh, it never got to the lower lift landing because there was never any lifts put in. Um, so let's move on uh, 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 further uh, south on the Charing Cross, Euston and Hampstead Railway to have a look at South Kentish Town Station. Uh, you can see North End uh, on the left between Golders Green and Hampstead, uh, and you can see uh, South Kentish Town on, on the, uh, the branch between uh, Camden Town uh, and uh, Tufnell Park, or Kentish Town, sorry, Kentish Town. Right, let's take a look at uh, what this looked like uh, in 1907. Um, very typical uh, tube station uh, of, of this period. Um, there's the, uh, uh, the lower lift landing at South Kentish Town, double-sided uh, with uh, access subways on each side. Um, and there's the the infilled emergency exit shaft, uh, which is uh, now gone. Most of the uh, exit shafts uh, at uh, the GO stations uh, have been filled in. Um, the the wider uh, lift shafts uh, are usually kept for uh, ventilation and emergency egress. Um, that's looking uh, uh, from inside the disused lift shaft out onto the lower lift landing. Uh, where the lifts had have, uh, obviously been removed. Uh, and uh, now we're on the uh, northbound platform, uh, and that's the bridge carrying the passenger subway across the track uh, to the station's lower lift landing. Um, again, uh, the platforms were removed when it was uh, converted to an air raid shelter, uh, and the uh, platform area uh, is now used for uh, the storage of... Uh, uh, various permanent way materials. Uh, and that's uh, the southbound platform. Uh, like the northbound uh, station tunnel, uh, uh, the area now used for track maintenance equipment. Uh, again, we had to be careful here. Um, they did know we were here. And I think, I'm pretty sure South Kentish Town actually opened up once on, the, on London Open House. Uh, so that must have been a mayhem for them. Uh, but we had to be very careful to make sure there was no one in the platform area when there were trains coming along. So uh, any photographs had to be done quickly. Uh, City Road. Uh, this is uh, City Road in 1915. It looks, it looks pretty derelict then. Um, that building was still intact or partially intact until only uh, a couple of years ago. As I said, that's taken in 1915. The station closed in 1922. Uh, to me, that, that looks pretty much like a closed station then because nobody used it. Um, that's what it looked like in 1967, one of Jim Connor's pictures. So really little had changed. Um, but uh, that was all removed. Uh, and when I visited, only the vent shaft on the left was still there and and a, a doorway on the right, uh, which uh, led... Uh, into the tunnels. Um, that's the subway uh, from the lower lift landing. All the original tiling is still in place. Uh, note that uh, a lot of these tunnels are lit. Um, the lights weren't necessarily on when we visited, but a lot of the tunnels are used for, for emergency egress, uh, should it ever be needed. Uh, so uh, they are maintained uh, to a certain extent. Filthy dirty, obviously, if you touch the walls, uh, brake lining gets everywhere. Uh, and you come out uh, uh, looking very, very black. Uh, that's a subway from the lower lift landing. Um, so the uh, uh, the lift is is ahead 
uh, and the platforms are behind me. Uh, and that's the stairs down to the platform area. And again, uh, this is the site of the northbound platform at City Road, uh, once again used as a dumping ground uh, for permanent way uh, maintenance materials. Um, so again, the platforms uh, were removed uh, when the uh, station uh, was converted to an air raid shelter. Uh, but you can see on the left, just behind that box on the left, uh, one of the cross tunnels leading to the other platform. Right, King William Street. Now, this was a, a station I always wanted to get into. Um, I missed uh, plenty of opportunity to get into it in the in the 1980s when it was uh, uh, somewhat easier. Um, uh, and I think so, or certainly people from Subrit uh, uh, went in in, in, in in the late 80s, I think. Uh, this is the original layout of the station, which was one track and two platforms, uh, as you can see. Um, so that changed pretty early on. Uh, when you look at the closure date of the station, 25th of February 1900, uh, it didn't last long and was uh, 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 and uh, was a very early loss um, because basically they wanted to uh, extend the line and the the angles were wrong, uh, so uh, they they just did away with the terminus. Uh, that's what the station looked like in uh, July 1930. Uh, in the center is a narrow wooden signal cabin uh, rising above the platforms. Uh, and you should see, if you look uh, right and left, uh, are the two signals. Um, that was before it was converted uh, into an air raid shelter because uh, uh, it didn't look like that for much longer. Um, if you go down there now, there's very little original tiling left. Uh, this is... Uh, uh, an ancillary room at King William Street, one of the few areas uh, where the original City and South London Railway tiling uh, is intact, and I've no reason uh, to think that it might not be today. Um, but that's what it looks like. Well, I was going to say that's what it looks like now, but sadly that's not what it looks like now because everything has changed again. I think all these uh, false floors for the air raid shelter have been taken out, um, which is a great shame. Um, but they had a, another use for the tunnels. Um, it was properly recorded. Um, I don't think you can ever justify preserving everything, um, but you must record everything. Uh, and then, you know, if it has to go, so be it, it has to go. Uh, that's the upper level uh, of, uh, of the air raid shelter. Um, it wasn't a public air raid shelter. This was actually uh, uh, an air raid shelter uh, for... Uh, a couple of uh, large office blocks, uh, a lot of the original uh, tiling still in place uh, and a few toilet cubicles uh, at the end of the, uh, this particular room. Now that is the, uh, the base of the staircase built during World War II to give access to the shelter from King William Street House. So that was one of the houses um, uh, that uh, one of the office blocks that used this as an air raid shelter. So there's nothing left up above. The shaft has been completely filled, uh, but the actual entrance into the shelter, into the station, uh, can still be seen uh, down below ground. Uh, at the end of the, uh, uh, the station tunnel, uh, the line runs into uh, two tunnels, one above the other, uh, uh, and then it goes under the Thames. Um, this is where most of the toilet cubicles are located. Uh, and look at that marvellous wartime poster, Careless Talk Costs Lives. Picture Jim Connor took, uh, sadly, not a trace of that. Um, when they were building the fleet line, uh, temperatures changed, it got very humid, uh, and everything paper down there disintegrated. Uh, so that is long gone. But again, Jim recorded it. Uh, so we, we know what was there. Um, that's as far as the tunnel goes today. Um, that gate that you see ahead of you, uh, that's just short of the Thames. Um, uh, you used to be able to get through that uh, uh, and, and get to, to London Bridge, uh, but uh, that's very securely locked now. So that's as far, that's as, far as uh, we were allowed to go. Um, let's take a look at the Oldwich branch. Uh, very 
uh, recent closure, um, closed 30th of September uh, 1994, a branch of the Great Northern, Piccadilly and Brompton Railway that, to be honest, never had any passengers. Uh, it was a disaster from start to finish. Um, that's what it looked like uh, in 1935, Aldrich Station. That's still there today. You can uh, you can go and see that. Um, pretty sure that's going to be uh, a, a listed structure. Uh, so you can see that on Aldrich today. Uh, and uh, that is still, uh, there are trips into Aldrich and that is, uh, can still be used as one of the access points into the station. Uh, and of course, it's well known for its uses uh, during the war uh, as an air raid shelter. Eventually they uh, discontinued uh, the train service uh, and um, uh, it was one of the biggest underground shelters during uh, World War II. Uh, and a few more pictures of Aldwych during the war. They used everything. They used the, the corridors, they used the various rooms, uh, they used the platforms and they used the track. Um, uh, and there we have plenty of people bedding down for the night uh, on the track at Aldwych. Uh, after the war, everything was restored, uh, trains started running again, uh, but still never carried any passengers. Uh, so this is Aldwych Station in the 1950s. Um, and uh, take a look at a, a, a plan of it. Um, it had two platforms, but only one of them uh, was actually used uh, for, for, for much, much of its, its life. Um, that's the shuttle train waiting at platform one at Aldwych in September uh, 1992. Um, the station was never completed. If you look at the walls, uh, you can see that they're, they're never completed. They only completed one half of the platform, the half, because they, they only used a short shut, shuttle train. So they just used the half that was, uh, uh, that was used by the train. The rest of it was never painted, never tiled. Um, uh, and that's just how it's, uh, it's still there today. Uh, and uh, that's looking uh, along the platform towards Hoban. Um, uh, the post, uh, a few posters, I think, uh, uh, something to do with the film that they're not original posters. Now, this was uh, platform two at Oldwich uh, in August 1995. <coughs> this was taken out of uh, out of use uh, a long time before uh, World War One, uh, and the platform was used for trying out uh, new tiles and new st station furniture for other lines. Um, so uh, London Transport kept it because uh, it had a use. Uh, and that's what we see it being used for here. And in fact, uh, they're trying out some uh, some new signs for Hoban Station. So we're at Oldwich, uh, but the signs are actually for Hoban Station. Uh, and uh, this was this is where they uh, they tried them out, see if they look good. Um, that's the Eastern Running Tunnel uh, looking from Oldwich uh, towards Hoban. During the Second World War, this too was uh, utilised as an air raid shelter. Um, <coughs> we were allowed through this. Um, these days, <coughs> on the public tours, people aren't allowed through this um, because they say there's a, uh, a health and safety issue. Uh, asbestos uh, has been quoted, um, but no one seemed to worry about it in the 90s. Uh, and uh, we were we were allowed uh, through the tunnel. Um, Hoban Station, uh, a plan of the station. Uh, I can't. I'm not going to labour on this for too long. Uh, you'll have to go back to the uh, the YouTube and uh, pause on it, uh, or buy a copy of my book. Of course, uh, that's that's what I would actually recommend, where you can see these uh, mar marvelous plans. Now this is uh, the crossover tunnel. Uh, to the south of Hoban Station uh, on the Oldwich branch. Uh, the western running tunnel taken out of use in 1917 is to the left. So where we, we saw that derelict tunnel, that's to the left uh, and uh, uh, through the small door uh, and the, the actual running tunnel crosses over uh, and that is seen on the right. 
um tunnel lights still on uh, i went there on the last day uh and i uh, asked the driver if i ha could have a cab ride uh and, and do some filming and he was perfectly happy so i did that uh, and then when i got to this started at old which we got to hoban and he said well would you like me to run again but this time with the tunnel lights on and oh yes please so he turned the tunnel lights on so i got two videos uh one uh, running with the tunnel lights off and one running with the tunnel lights on very uh, accommodating uh people were i think more so in those days um these days there's more health and safety um uh, i i don't remember i know in, in in the old days people used to walk on track and uh, uh, but I never heard of anyone being killed. You know, I'm not, not, I'm not going to go on about health and safety when I've got my, my views on it. We move on. Um, that's a view along platform six at Hoban, uh, looking towards Russell Square. Uh, notice the uh, safety link between the power rails uh, on the uh, on the track. Uh, so that satisfied us that there wasn't any power on. Um, this line can be used uh, if if you want to uh, if you want to film uh, and you want a, a vintage underground station, then they they tend to use old which um, and they've got a, a train which is kept generally in the tunnel uh, and uh, it can all still be powered up. So old which uh, to Hoban can still be used. Uh, now, if you look onto the floor along this corridor, you can see a platform edge. Um, this is the surviving wartime offices and dormitories on platform five at Hoban. Now these were built uh, on the uh, on the disused platform. Uh, they were two level, so it was all uh, quite tight down there. Uh, and there was uh, a, a dormitory and offices. That's what it looks like today. Well, that's what it looked like in 2008 um they've stripped out half of the corridor you can still see if you look sort of uh two-thirds in from the uh from the right hand side you can see the platform edge um so so uh still there so that's uh, uh that's what platform five uh looks like today right where should we go now down street um got to be one of my favorite stations uh where's down street uh, there it is uh between dover street uh and hyde park corner um closed because nobody used it uh it it, it really it it was the entrance was up a side street off piccadilly uh and, and really no nobody used it so uh eventually trains started passing down street uh and that actually became a song at the time passing down street and eventually they all pass down street uh and the station closed um but it's uh, one of the most interesting stations because it has a a marvelous history um that's what it looked like in in 1925 and if you walk along down street uh you can still see that uh, uh that there today um that's what it looked like uh in 1995 uh it's so another leslie green uh tiled uh entrance building uh, the, like stanley heaps on on the central line leslie green was responsible for a lot of the stations on on the bakerloo and the northern and the piccadilly uh and his red tiling is so distinctive uh and you can see that at so many stations today when we looked at uh, south kentish town earlier uh we had uh, a, a leslie green station um that's a narrow uh, staircase down from the surface building at Down Street. Um, uh, a bit of wartime uh, wording there. Uh, and the blast door uh, fitted with compression latches to ensure a gas tight seal and an eye level observation spy hole. Uh, you can just see on the uh, on the far right. Uh, so that's the the way down from the surface building now, because the uh, the building didn't become an air raid shelter it became offices uh for the uh, for not only for the for london underground under transport uh but also for churchill for for a time um they built offices uh on the emergency stairway um so uh the stairway was kept 
uh, but they built offices uh, on the stairway. So you had uh, small rooms accessed uh, from, uh, uh, from, from the stairway. Um, there are public tours to Down Street. I think they're bloody expensive. Um, but when you when you look at what you can see, I think I think there might be around eighty pounds. Um, but you're there for an hour and a half, uh, uh, and I think it's it, it's probably money well spent. Uh, could it be Winston's bath? Well, they wouldn't have put a bath in for everybody. Uh, I can certainly say that. When I went to um, Burlington, the the central government war headquarters at Corsham. Uh, there was a bath there in one room. Um, now, it had to be the Queen's bath because it was the only room that had a bath uh, and they wouldn't have given a, 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 a bath to just anybody. So I think this is Winston's bath uh, still in place uh, at, at Down Street Station. Now, we're getting to the bottom of the uh, emergency stairs there um, and uh, you can see a lot of the original tiling still in place. Um, so uh, it's beginning to look like a, a station here. Um, very little of the platform is left. Uh, the, just, they've built uh, a brick wall along the platform. They built uh, offices on the platform. Uh, but uh, just in case they wanted to use it, uh, uh, they still could. Now, we, we went in on this ship. I've been there a couple of times. We went in from Down Street. Um, I'm not sure if I've got the... If I put the picture on, I, I probably didn't. Uh, we went in from Down Street, um, but when we wanted to leave, uh, we had a man with a coloured light, and he held out his coloured light, and the next train stopped, and we all piled in through the driver's cab, and you can imagine the the faces of the people in the front carriage as, as we passed uh, through the driver's door. Uh, must be sort of 15 of us, came out of the driver's cab into the first carriage covered in brake lining so we were black of the ace of spades and it was it was it must have been a funny sight um sadly they don't they don't stop uh, uh they don't stop trains to uh, let you on anymore uh, when they do the open days you go uh, in from down street uh, and you go out down street again <coughs> that's a view across the lower lift landing uh, the original uh, passenger lift shaft showing the entrance subway on the far side. So, uh, again, the, the landing would have had uh, entrances on both sides arrive for arriving and departing passengers. Uh, that's the entrance subway looking back towards the lower lift shaft. Uh, notice the uh, in the foreground you've got a bridge uh, where, the, uh, where the subway actually goes, goes across the line. Um, in remarkably good condition, the low level subway, uh, all traces of the wartime offices were swept away uh, in the 1970s because once again, this is uh, uh, an emergency egress point. Uh, so the subways there are lit uh, and remain in good condition. Um, and uh, uh, if you go on one of the public tours, you'll certainly uh, walk along that subway. Um, on the platforms, there's some uh, original equipment still in place. Uh, uh, there's a uh, two-position manual uh, switchboard uh, in uh, in one of the rooms. Everything down there is grey because it's all covered in brake linings. Um, so anything you touch, you're covered in brake linings as well. Um, but there is quite a lot still down there. Um, that's what it looked like. Uh, during the war, this is in the subway um, that we saw earlier, uh, and it was uh, rooms uh, allocated to the London Transport Executive uh, for their for their meetings uh, during World War II, um, and uh, a perfectly safe uh, and a nice environment it was for them. Um, right, uh, another uh, another of my favourite stations. I don't know which one is my favourite tube station. Um, but Brompton Road has certainly got to be uh, one of them. Uh, you can see it's between South Kensington and Knightsbridge. Um, so uh, uh, another station that was uh, not heavily used uh, and it led to its closure in 
1926. Um, this one always proved difficult to get to uh, initially um, because uh, the surface building where there is access uh, was sold to the war office. Um, so London Transport may uh, kept uh, the tunnels <coughs> and half a lift shaft uh, and the war office had the rest. Uh, so um, we approached uh, the Ministry of Defence and uh, got nowhere with them. Uh, so eventually we had to go in uh, on an official trip uh, uh, arranged through London Transport. Um, that's what Brompton's road station looked like in, in 1907. Uh, that building has now gone. Uh, there is still an entrance uh, around the corner, which is a side entrance, which, ne which is never actually a, a public entrance. Um, but uh, uh, that building uh, has now gone. Um, so we'll take a look at, uh, again, I'm not going to dwell on these. You'll have to buy my book if you want to uh, see these nicely uh, coloured di diagrams. Um, now, when I visited, um, can't remember the date. Uh, it was um, probably about 2007, 2008. Um, the only way we could arrange for a visit was to walk along the track from South Kensington. Um, so this was arranged by a uh, subrep member who uh, was a signalman at Coburg Street uh, and he knew all the right people. Uh, so he arranged for a party of uh, London Transport employees uh, to meet at uh, South Kensington Station at one o'clock in the morning uh, so that we could do a track walk um, between uh, uh, the last train and the first train uh, the following morning. Um, we were all uh, dressed up in our orange gear. We had to have someone who was familiar with the line uh, who, who came along. Um, and this was a, it was a, a young girl is all I can say. She, you know, she, she could have been my daughter or granddaughter even. Uh, and she came from uh, the other end of the line, um, Highbury or something. Uh, and she supposedly was of the right rank and she knew the line, but it was quite clear that she didn't know the line. So uh, she said, does anyone know where we're going? Uh, and nobody did and so I thought well you know we want to go there don't we so I piped up um, well I do and of course I'm the only person who, who didn't actually work for, for for the underground so she said right you're leading us then um, so I was a bit a little bit nervous about stepping down onto the tracks because we've got a, a live railway here or, or, or live during the day uh, but they put um, some equipment across the tracks just to show that there was uh, nothing uh, nothing live and we stepped down onto the track and we started making our way uh, to Brompton Road Station with me leaving because I I knew what to look out for when we got there uh, and that's what I found when we got there um, uh, the tunnel opened up to accommodate the platform uh, but again uh, uh, a brick wall had been built the platform had been removed and the brick wall had been built uh, so that uh, offices uh, could be built and in fact um, it wasn't offices here, it was a gun control centre um, or anti-aircraft operations room. Uh, uh, they're both the same thing, but in, 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 in World War II, they tend to be called gun control centres. So this is where the anti-aircraft guns for London uh, would have been operated from. So one of the gun control rooms would have been on the far side of that wall. Um, lots of original signage still in place uh, at Brompton Road, uh, the station name, um, way out, uh, a lot of original tiling. Um, so it's, it's a very nostalgic place to visit. Um, I don't think there are any trips now uh, today. I've been back since this trip and, and the next time was actually an official subrit trip. Uh, which we arranged to do with the MOD uh, and they let us in uh, and then they left us with the keys. I couldn't believe it. Um, they said, when you finish, just drop the keys through the letterbox because we're going. Uh, so we, we had uh, 
uh, we had our time down there and a, and a great time it was. Uh, I'm not sure if I've got pictures from uh, the, the the later visit. Um, but this is uh, uh, the eastbound platform at Brompton Road, um, converted into office space for anti-aircraft command. Um, you can see the bridge, or a couple of bridges there, uh, taking the subways <coughs> across the platform. Uh, they built the gun operations rooms in the lift shaft. Um, so this is gun operations room two uh, uh, in the lift shaft. So we had uh, three, I think it was, gun operations rooms in the lift shaft, one above the other. Uh, and then they had a fourth one uh, along the platform. Um, so again, if you buy the book, you can uh, uh, see this plan and you can uh, uh, see in detail what was there. Um, that's what it looks like today. Um, so the lift shafts were changed out of all recognition. Uh, they put in a, uh, an emergency stairway, uh, which linked all the uh, gun operations rooms uh, and each room was accessed uh, from the emergency staircase. Um, air filters uh, designed to counter the effect of poison gas uh, by made by Sutcliffe and Speakman, uh, the filters that you see there. A uh, very common uh, uh, thing to find in, in, in World War II buildings. I've seen them in, in so many places, <coughs> but all still there in Brompton Road uh, and hopefully still there today. Um, that's uh, a ventilation uh, plant at the bottom of the other shaft. Now, one shaft, they, the, the War Department utilized the whole shaft for the gun operations rooms. The other shaft was split in two. Uh, and the War Department had one half of it where they put plant and offices. Uh, and London Transport kept the other half for ventilation. Uh, and that's still there today. Um, I think we've had enough of uh, uh, disused underground stations. There, there will be more in part two, I promise you. Uh, but right now, let's take a look at something else because we're um, a long way. I see I've got some questions here, <coughs> but I, I'm going to leave those for now. So I want to get on and show you as many uh, pretty pictures as I can. Uh, we've, uh, we're on slide number 91 already, so... Uh, we're we're motoring through them a bit. Um, <coughs> cemetery catacombs. Uh, there were three lots of cemetery catacombs in London: at Kensal Green, Brompton, and West Norwood. And uh, the sites are are shown there. Um, I think Brompton Road occasionally opens to the public. Uh, Brompton, sorry, uh, Kensal Green does. I don't think. West Norwood has done uh, for a long time. Um, that's uh, what the uh, cemetery catacombs look like. It was basically a, a lot of, um, you've got a main corridor with a coffin lift. Uh, and coffins were lowered down from the chapel above uh, and then maneuvered into one of these side corridors and uh, all the burial bays are numbered there. Uh, so you would purchase a bay and you'd have uh, room for quite a lot of coffins so families used to purchase uh, the bays and you could buy individual gated vaults as well and i think we probably take a look at some of those um that's the interior of the episcopal chapel in 1930 showing the catafalque uh, which is the top of the coffin lift uh and uh, uh the stairs down uh, the doorway uh, led down to the uh the tunnels which were below this so the coffin would be placed on the catafalque and the whole fifth thing would descend uh into the floor uh to the uh, the catacombs below uh and there we have the the other doorway on the right where the, that door would have been seen and that is the uh the bottom uh or the uh, uh that's immediately underground you see the hole in the in the roof um, which would have led up to the chapel uh, the chapel was destroyed in world war ii so that's all gone um but the uh, uh the coffin lift or or the remains of uh brahma's hydraulic lift 
which was installed in uh, 1839. So we're talking uh, something of uh, a considerable age here, uh, but still remains in, uh, in relatively good condition uh, in West Norwood. And there's some of the coffins uh, still in place. Um, these appear to be children's coffins, uh, just stacked, any old how really. Um, a lot of smallpox victims uh, were interred in, in, in West Norwood. Um, and uh, when we first went down there, there was no, no great issue. Uh, and then a, uh, a few months later, when I tried to arrange another visit, um, because I'm going to tell you this, because I'm, I wasn't very pleased with English Heritage. I went there with English Heritage the first time, and they hadn't got a clue about taking photographs underground. Um, so I had an agreement with them that I would take the photographs. Uh, they would pay to have them processed and we would share copyright, uh, which seemed, seemed fine. So I took all the photographs. I gave them the films. They had them processed. Um, and that's the last I heard. Uh, they uh, eventually I managed to get a set of prints out of them uh labeled on the back as if they were their pictures and they denied any knowledge uh, uh of me uh having uh, having any copyright claim over them which really i'm going to use a rude word there but i won't it, it, it annoyed me um uh i'm not going to mention the names but i remember the names of, of the people who who i had this agreement with uh, but anyway, I, I, I arranged to go back to West Norwood. Uh, but by this, this time, the council had said, well, the smallpox is actually, we believe it is still live down there. Um, uh, smallpox uh, can last for a long time. And, it, and, and people have been have broken in and they've been fiddling about with the coffins. Um, and we, we don't really want anyone down there uh, because you could still catch it. Um, eventually i persuaded them to let me go and they gave me the keys uh, and i helped myself so i redid all the pictures um but i'm really cheesed off with english heritage um ne never forgiven them for that but uh, at least we've still i still still got some good pictures um there are a lot of coffins down there uh so i don't know if these are just family family bays um but they were all private uh uh, catacombs and there's the uh, an original sign there from the south metropolitan cemetery company who who actually built the catacombs uh, and the sign is uh, as far as i know it's still there um <coughs> another coffin lift now this one is in much better condition as you can see and this has now been fully restored uh to working order uh, at kensal green cemetery uh, again, installed beneath the Episcopal Chapel, uh, uh, slightly later, this one, 1844. <coughs> but uh, uh, I think the last burial, when I went there, I went, I went in the 90s, I think, uh, and the last burial had been in the 60s. Uh, and that was still there. All the rotting flowers were still there all around it. Um, so... Uh, they have now restored that, and it is full working order. And I think you can be interred in Kensal Green. I don't know if anyone has been, uh, but you can be. Um, again, it's 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 much the same as as uh, as West Norwood. Um, it was never so heavily used. Uh, there are a lot of uh, a lot of bays that uh, remain empty, um, and there's the restored coffin lift in the chapel above. Um, so obviously works because it was down below and they, now they've got it up there um so uh in 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 perfectly good order i'd like to find out if they do actually use it um i haven't got the picture because i can't can't find it um but there's uh uh there was uh i know i can't find the negative it's one of the ones that uh, uh english heritage kept but i i did have a print which showed a skull sitting between two coffins. Uh, I'll have to find that one. 
Right, uh, so we move on to uh, Brompton Cemetery Catacombs, the northwest quadrant of the colonnade at Brompton Cemetery. Now, the catacombs are, are below this. They're much smaller than at uh, uh, West Norwood or Kensal Green, uh, and they don't take up uh, the full uh, length of the, of the colonnade, uh, but they follow its, uh, its angle. Um, Well-populated uh, section of the catacombs at Brompton. Uh, note the curve of the vault. Uh, following the circular sweep of the colonnade above. Um, again, lots of uh, uh, getting away towards one end, lots of empty bays, uh, so it wasn't wasn't heavily used. Right, let's take a look at uh, Thames Barrier. So we, we've looked at things that are old, so we're coming up a, a little bit more up to date now uh, with uh, Thames Barrier service tunnels. Um, Subrit had uh, an official visit to the Thames Barrier, which is very interesting. Not underground, you might think, but there are service tunnels which are totally underground. They, they run the full uh, uh, width of the river um, beneath uh, the barrier. So that's uh, pier number nine, seen from the south abutment. Uh, and if we go down below, there's the upstream service tunnel from the south shore abutment uh, looking north uh, beneath the river. Uh, I don't think we were allowed to uh, uh, to, to walk along the service tunnel, um, but at least we were allowed uh, to take photographs there. Uh, and there's the the entrance to it from the uh, uh, from the bottom of the stairs uh, from pier number nine. Right, uh, now I'm sure a lot of you will have heard uh, about the Crystal Palace subway. Uh, steps once led down, uh, this was a first class subway. Uh, you know, the riffraff didn't get to use this, so it's first class passengers. Steps led down from the Crystal Palace to this circulating area here, uh, and then went under Crystal Palace Parade, uh, and then there were steps down uh, to Crystal Palace Station uh, on Crystal Palace High Level Station on on the far side. Um, now this was when I first visited this. It must have been in the 60s, uh, and they were actually using the subway then. They were using it as uh, on on the high level station site uh, was a car park, uh, and they they had some wooden steps up to the subway. Uh, and it was a car park from the racetrack, uh, which was on the on the on the palace site. Uh, so uh, people parking in the car park uh, would walk, uh, would climb up the wooden stairs uh, through the subway, up some more stairs, uh, and uh, onto the racetrack uh, on the palace side. I don't I don't think that lasted that long. Um, the ornate vaulted and tiled ceiling in the subway. Um, Italian craftsmen, uh, experts in such work, were brought in uh, to complete this. Um, this is obviously listed, uh, and uh, I was very pleased to uh, hear that uh, work has finally started on restoring this and opening it up to the public. Um, now, I'm sure you're familiar with the, uh, the Kingsway Tram Tunnel, which is, uh, half of it still there anyway. Uh, one half of it now is the Strand Underpass. Um, but the, uh, the northern end of the, of the, uh, uh, the Tram Tunnel is still there. And I'm sure you will have seen the tiled, uh, ramp, uh, down into the tunnel, uh, just uh, on the north side of, of, of Hoban Station. Um, so this closed with the uh, uh, the end of uh, trams, which was, uh, somebody tell me, 1953. Uh, and uh, it had two stations, uh, and uh, this is uh, Hoban Station uh, on the, uh, on the uh, Kingsway subway. Now, this is the... The north end of the tramway tunnel looking towards Hoban station 
Hoban station is at the bottom of the ramp. Um, all the tram tracks uh, are still there. Um, again, they're using this uh, 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 as a owned by Camden Council, uh, and they've been using it for just the storage of uh, uh, of all sorts of things. Um, it's been taken over by Cross Rail, uh, who've uh, actually put a, a a grout shaft in the middle of the floor in here. Um, and they say, I don't think it's happened yet, but they're going to fill it in and they're going to restore everything to as it was. Um, we'll, we'll wait and see if that happens. Now, it took me, it took me a long time to get into here. Um, and eventually I did some filming with um, Suggs of Madness, uh, which he got in. And uh, our, our man with the keys from Camden uh, uh, was very friendly and i said well how about a visit for subrit i told him about subrit and i said um you know they, they'd love to see a place like this and he said he'll he'll ask his boss uh and his boss was said yes so it was arranged for um a few weeks later on a saturday morning uh that he would come down and open it up for 80 subrit members so it was a free-for-all he just let us in um to be honest we shouldn't have gone as far as you can because the far end is uh, is under West, Westminster Council's property, um, but they, they didn't know. So what they don't know about, they don't care about. Um, but we charged three pounds a head uh, and, and, and the man from Camden, he didn't know about this. So I gave him all the money and he, he, you should have seen the smile on his face. You know, he got 150 odd pounds uh, for, for just being a nice guy uh, and, and very well deserved. So uh, that's what it looked like uh, when I visited. Uh, said it's not going to look like that now while Crossrail are there, but hopefully it will again. Um, but there's the uh, station, Hoban Station. Um, in the middle of it, you can see the stairways, stairs up to uh, street level. And if you stand on one of the islands opposite Hoban Station, you can see a big grill and you can look down on the top of those stairs. Uh, so all that... Uh, is still still there today um the were i don't think they were original posters i think they were posters put up by a, a film company but there are posters on the walls you can certainly see where the the london transport roundels uh, had been once um what it was being used for uh uh from 1974 and, and, until 1984 was the office of the Thames Flood Engineering Controller. Um, uh, that had stopped, I think, by the time I visited. Uh, but uh, a lot of uh, their equipment was still there. Their offices were still there. Um, but by that time, it was being used by uh, uh, the roads maintenance uh, department for storage of all sorts of redundant signs and cones uh, and all sorts of things. Um, but all, all that was uh, housed in a, in a porter cabin, um, actually in the station, in, in one, on, on one of the tram lines in the station. Uh, and in fact, you can see it. You can see uh, in the background on the left, you can see the, the grey porter cabin, uh, which uh, housed the, uh, the GLC Emergency Planning Department uh, Flood Control Centre. So this is Hoban Station. Uh, let's move on to, I think, one of the most, I, I say they're all interesting, but, you know, I get hooked by things underground, um, especially things you can't get into anymore. Uh, Camden Railway Vaults and Horse Tunnels. Uh, this links um, a lot of old railway warehouses around Camden Lock with the canal uh, the grand uh, the Regents Canal at Camden uh, with the with the roundhouse at Camden uh, uh, this is below, basically below the roundhouse what you see here um, and it was a, a an interchange point between canal and railway where goods could be uh, transshipped from from boats to trains uh, and uh, moved uh wherever they needed to be moved to but it was it was a 
an absolutely fascinating underground uh, uh, interchange point. And there's a beautiful map showing, uh, you have to buy the book if you want to see this. Uh, I've only got eight copies left, so don't leave it too long. Um, but it shows the various buildings uh, that were linked uh, by a series, uh, a series of tunnels um, uh, beneath basically what is now Camden Market. Um, a lot of it's now been demolished. Um, my way in was, uh, if you look at the bottom where it says Regent's Canal, uh, and you can see the lock to the right of that, uh, and you can see an underground, uh, what's an, it's actually an underground canal basin. Uh, and that was my way in. Uh, that, that was just open. You could just go in there. Uh, uh, and that led you into the tunnels, uh, which led into uh, uh, a very interesting uh, network. 90, about 96, I think I was in there. That's the Underground Canal Basin. Um, a year or so after that, there was a, a nice launch moored in there. Um, but uh, uh, British Waterways... Uh, have or the canal and river trust are they now they've now uh, gated uh, not completely gated the entrance but uh, uh, if you lie down in a canoe i think you can probably just about get in there now uh, but i don't fit in canoes um so that's the underground uh, the underground canal basin on the far side of that uh, you've got the start of what was called horse tunnels because everything underground uh, was towed uh, by horses between the various warehouses uh, that's a section of beer vaults uh, adjacent to the interchange dock, which we've just seen. Uh, that, I think, is now completely gone. Um, there's been so much uh, redevelopment of Camden over the years, uh, and it's uh, it, it, the owners of Camden Market became very unfriendly uh, and just wouldn't allow anyone in there. So some of the tunnels were being used, some were uh, split up and, and some bits were being used so it, it changed out of all all recognition uh and um uh, and the owners were uh, were very unfriendly towards visits which was a shame uh again the southwest corner of the vault close to where the interchange dock uh joins the regent's canal uh and you can see the the runs there for uh for rolling uh barrels along uh, that's gone now. Um, I think this has gone vaulted sidings between the 1839 goods depot, the concrete path through the former sidings linked to all sops, later Gilby's uh, 1855 vine uh, vaults, which is what we saw earlier. Uh, and uh, uh, an original railway sign is still in place there. There were a, a few railway signs in place there. So it uh, it was a very atmospheric place um 1988 so it's earlier earlier than i thought the visit there um uh show sections of the eastern horse tunnel uh the sort of avoided development or destruction that's it's still there it's very shallow this um it's only just underground um but that's it that's been divided into uh, so many different areas. It's uh, uh, there's no way you can uh, you can actually get a view along uh, along the Eastern Horse Tunnel anymore. Um, this has gone. Uh, the basement of, of the former London Northwestern Railway Goods Warehouse, showing part of the narrow gauge railway system that served it. Um, so that, that would then run into the uh, into the horse tunnels, and then goods would be transshipped. Uh, on narrow gauge wagons hauled by horses uh, to wherever they were required. Uh, we did find the old stables there. There was um, a load of uh, straw still on the floor. Uh, that was right next to the uh, uh, exchange basin. I don't think I took a picture of that. Right, so uh, chalk and sand mines. Uh, I'm trying to give you a, a variety um, so that... Uh, uh, you will hopefully come back for more next time. I was just uh, looking at my, oh, we're, we're motoring through, aren't we? 
I'm going to have to stop very soon, I think, and answer a few questions. I can see I've got a few here. <coughs> right, chalk and sand mines. Uh, this is uh, Dartford Chalk Mine. Now, where's that, you might say? Um, Shepherd's Lane, it's near there. Um, the access to this is from a public road. You lift a manhole up in a public road, and you've got a short ladder, uh, and then you've got a little passageway and that takes you to a longer ladder uh, and that takes you to uh, all of this. It's a, a typical passageway uh, in kids' mine. Um, the mine has at one point been flooded. You can see a tide mark part way up the wall uh, on the left. So you have to go down the, there at the right time of year. Uh, we had to have a little um, workman's, uh, one of those workman's cabins uh, that you uh, you put up in the road uh, and, and put uh, uh, and keep someone on the surface because you've actually got to lift a manhole cover in the road. Uh, <laughs> and the council were very unhappy about this, but they, they let us get on with it. <laughs> so long as we made sure there was always someone on the surface uh, otherwise you could end up uh, someone could drop down uh, and it was about 40 foot down into the mine so uh, it, it was a long way down right where are we uh, they they were they the, the mines were built uh, well, uh, by gradually working working your way down with benches um, it indicates uh, the chalk was extracted in layers working down from the ceiling. Uh, so you take out, you know, the, the first section of chalk, then you go down through the floor. So the mine actually got deeper. Uh, and that's one of the, uh, the benches at the, at the end of the heading. Are you looking up uh, the vertical access shaft? Uh, bottom of the shaft appears to be lined with brick. There are two shafts. Uh, at this mine, or oh, I should have said we, we've moved now from uh, Dartford to the Dingles Chalk Mine at Pinner. Um, no access here at all now. The council have gone funny. Um, when when I went there, it's about eighty feet down. <coughs> They've got a, a, a nice capped shaft, and you go down on wire ladders, um, which I'm not over keen on, but uh, <coughs> got got down there. And they've got an emergency winch. Um, so uh, if you can't get up the ladders, and if you've never climbed a wire ladder, um, they're not that easy. You have to sit astride them or you or, or stand astride them or you you put your feet on the front and your, your hands at the back. Otherwise, they just swing away from you. Um, but they've got an, an emergency winch for anyone who's stuck. Um, but it was a... It was a, something out of a car that was powered by a car battery, uh, and I don't think it would have taken my weight, so I, I made sure I was able to, to climb up the ladder. Um, but it, it's a, a really fascinating place, this is. Uh, uh, another working bench uh, at the end of this passageway. Um, very clean, uh, very stable. Uh, little evidence of... Uh, any falls. I'm actually working on an article on this mine. Uh, it might make it into the next uh, issue of Subterranea. It might not, um, but it will be coming uh, uh, very soon uh, because we've got a good write-up on it. Uh, we've got the pictures. Uh, and uh, again, it's, it's it's a huge place. Um, maybe I should have had someone in for scale there. You can see just, just how, how, how huge it is. Uh, but this is all uh, beneath a, a park and allotments. Um, so uh, per perfectly safe, perfectly stable, uh, but the council uh, just don't want to know at the moment, which is is a pity. Um, right, this is Diamond Terrace Sand Mine at Blackheath. Uh, this is in someone's garden. Um, it's a much smaller uh, affair to, to the chalk mines. Um, 
uh, and it was used as an air raid shelter in World War II, uh, and uh, there is still evidence. I'm not going to say where in Diamond Terrace, because I don't think the, the owners would uh, want to be inundated with uh, people knocking at their front door, even when COVID is over. Um, so, but it, it is Diamond Terrace uh, in Blackheath. So let's take a look at some pictures underground. Uh, that's the entrance in the back garden. Wouldn't you like something like that in your back garden, Mrs. I know I would. Uh, and when you get down into it, um, brick lined, uh, sandbags left over from the war. Um, it, it's, it seems very stable. Um, uh, no, no great evidence of problems. And the, I think there's some marvelous graffiti down there. Um, nobody likes modern graffiti, but there's nothing wrong with, uh, graffiti of the time and have a look at that uh, uh impression of mussolini uh, on the left and there's his picture uh, in the center I, I think it's quite a likeness uh and then we've got shirley temple uh, uh the child actress uh, on the right and the picture of shirley temple i think that's a fair likeness as well so um we would we would always um try and keep old graffiti while uh, discouraging uh, people from adding modern graffiti um, because this this is part of the history of the mine I think I think this is it's important right uh, Royal Observer Corps monitoring posts um, now they're the ones in London um, some were closed in 1968 when the uh, 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 government cuts uh, closed half uh, of the Royal Observer Corps post, there were 1,563 uh, posts initially um, between built between 1955 and 1968. Um, yes, they were building them uh, just before they started closing them. Um, and uh, about half that number were closed in 1968. Um, now let's take a look at the ones that are still extant bose park uh, that's adjacent to alexandra palace you can see that uh, they want to do something with that but i don't think anyone has decided what chigwell that's extant that was sold a few years ago uh dulwich that's a reservoir on a golf course uh hounslow that was the hardest one to get into to be honest um because it's airside at, at heathrow airport um, so you've actually got to go through passport control uh, to actually get to see it. Um, I'll mention that. Again. I think I've got a picture of that. I'll mention that again in a minute. Uh, Not cold has been restored. Uh, Mortlake demolished. New Mould, and that's on a golf course. North Holt is on the airfield uh, at North Holt. Um, had permission to to look at that. The guy got the keys uh, and he opened the top, and there was a skull and crossbones. Um, put across the top of the shaft and he said right that's as far as you can go potentially hazardous space and he I couldn't believe he actually used the words it's more than my job's worth to let you go down there you know we, we actually burst out laughing me and Keith uh, and uh, Wallington uh, that one's still there so we'll take a look at uh, some of the posts that are still there and perhaps some of the ones that are gone in the London area uh, that's a, a, a typical uh, Royal Observer Corps post. Um, I'm sure uh, many of you will 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 have seen them. Um, uh, that's the Bose Park post uh, in in '98. Um, it's in a very confined, a very small compound, uh, and uh, it is now securely locked. Uh, it was. Uh, I, I've. I had a key to many of these posts, so I'm actually getting this one. Um, and we've had a lot of uh, communication from uh, the park, and they, and they want to do something with it, um, but haven't quite decided what. Uh, so you can go and see that one from uh, 
uh, just walking around the outside. Uh, Chigwell, uh, that, that was a wreck. Um, uh, as you can see, the vandals have got into that one and uh, they, they've been not, uh, not very uh, nice to it. Um, looks like I've only got nine minutes to go. Thank you, Richard. <laughs> We're not going to get anywhere close to finishing this. I hope you're enjoying it. Uh, it it's nice to be able to show some of these places. Um, what we'll probably do is we'll we'll probably finish on the ROC post uh, and give me a chance to uh, answer some of your questions. Um, what do we got now? Uh, the queue, the crew of the Collindale post uh, pose at the entrance hatch on the last day of operation in in 1968. Um, this is nothing to be seen there now. Uh, so all we've got is a record nice it's in color uh, of, of the Collindale crew uh, at their post on the top of the hill uh, this is an interesting one um, post at Dulwich stands on the edge of a golf course um, top picture was taken by Bob Jenner uh, bottom picture was taken by me a couple of years later as you can see they what they've done here is they've um, they've removed the top of the post. They've repositioned uh, the hatch uh, at ground level. Uh, they've used the same hatch uh, and they flooded it uh, and they're now using it as an underground reservoir. Uh, so, so they found a, a good new use uh, for, for their bunker. Now this one I thought was, was great. Um, this is Enfield. Uh, now I spoke to the farmer there. You always speak to people because people like to know they're all people are generally friendly um now he, he knew nothing about this post being on his land so i walked him over to where it was because it's marked on an old map i said right this is where it is and he said give me your phone number uh and a couple of weeks later he rang me up he said i found it uh, and he, he got his jcb out and he, he dug the post open uh, uh, and he was really pleased with himself and i was really pleased with him that he'd taken the trouble um it's all filled in again now but it's been recorded so we know it's still there uh it's unusual to demolish in this way what they've done here is they've they, they've demolished the roof just knocked everything in uh normally they just knock all the the top down the shaft and just cover it all over uh, but they've made an effort to uh demolish properly here uh and uh that's elstree post uh nice condition uh sadly all all that's gone now so uh, nothing there to be seen now apart from uh, that telegraph pole on the left. That's still there, uh, but ev ev everything else is gone. Um, Hounslow Post. Now, this is the interesting one. Um, I said this is airside uh, at Heathrow. Um, so I got through customs control to show me passport. And then I met up with a the health and safety team who drove me over there. There must have been about 10 of them. And they tested the air and... And they said, oh, no, it's OK, um, but we advise you not to go down. I said, can I ignore your advice? And they said, yes. So I did. So I went down. Uh, and the post was in. Obviously, you don't expect any vandalism at, at a post that's airside at Heathrow. Um, but what I didn't expect was at the top of the ladder, there was a light switch. I turned it on. This is a post that closed in 1968. And the light still came on. Um, so the, the observers had actually wired their post up to the main. So you can see the uh, fluorescent light on the ceiling. Shame I didn't take a picture with the lights on. Uh, and uh, that's the restored post at Knockholt. Um, now, this is for sale. If anyone wants rest, uh, to restore a post, he doesn't want a lot of money. for. I don't think he wants any money. He wants to give it to somebody. Um, but if anyone is interested in taking on a post, uh, then this one at Knockholt is available. So contact me uh, sometime later. Uh, again, he's brought all the equipment back. So you get all the equipment as well. He's not giving you just a post. He's giving you uh, the equipment as well. Um, the overgrown uh, surface features of the long abandoned uh, Molden posts uh, on the Molden golf course. Uh, right, the master post at uh, RAF Northolt, that's the one where he said, it's more than my job's worth. 
I just <laughs> I still couldn't get over him using those terrible words more than his job, sir. Uh, that's Oxshot. They, they've built a, a horrible statue of a horse's head there, um, but that's still there. That's a 68 one, 68 closure, uh, but it's still there. That's uh, Wallington. That's uh, that's still there, but uh, it doesn't look like that anymore. It, everything's all sort of uh, cultivation around it. And we're going to stop there. I'm sorry. Uh, we're going to stop there because um, uh, we are, I think, running out of time. Let me have a look at. Uh, yes, it's. Uh, I, I want to try and get a, a few uh, questions in. Hello. Uh, so we'll, uh, we'll we'll try and get some questions in if anyone's got any questions. I'm not uh, actually seeing any questions. I'll, I'll take this opportunity to hold up my book, Secret Underground London. Now, this is out of print. I've only got eight copies left. Um, once these are gone, they'll all be gone. Uh, so uh, if you'd like a copy... Um, my email is nick at catford.info nick at catford.info contact me by email and we'll talk about the various ways uh, that you can get it I've got a message from Richard that says I'm going to get unceremoniously cut off in two minutes so it looks like we haven't got uh, any time for any uh, questions which is a shame but I hope you've enjoyed uh, my very first webinar. Uh, do I, uh, Gemma has asked, do I have any plans of any places uh, you have still to investigate? Yes. <coughs> I've got plans of all sorts of places that COVID, COVID has put a stop to, but I'm still interested in, invest, in investigating places. I'd love to get into some of the underground uh, stations that I haven't got into. Um, so I'm still very much uh, on the ball as far as uh, this is concerned. Um, I've enjoyed uh, I've enjoyed visiting all these underground sites. Um, Stephen Ross is looking forward to part two. Um, he says many thanks. It's my pleasure. Hilary Shaw, uh, are you covering the abandoned Elstree Northern Line? I would love to, but uh, I can show some pictures of the tunnel. Um, but I never got into that. That was long gone. Um, uh joanna purdy i uh, hope you have more east london we've got things in east london of course uh thanks paul lane for your uh, your kind comments uh, i'm sorry we can't get to to more of the uh, the q a um but i i wanted to finish uh strangely enough at the uh, when i gave this talk to sub brit we finished on the roc post so we finished at exactly the same uh spot thanks thanks adam for your, your kind comments and uh Ah, Anne, uh, Anne, is that surely that can't be the Anne I knew in the 70s? Um, uh, do I take photos of modern stations? Um, no, uh, I only take pictures of old stations, closed stations. Um, uh, don't forget to buy my book. Uh, don't mind if I hold it up again, do you? Uh, oh, I shouldn't, I should have given you the price 24.99 nick at catford.info contact me uh, and we'll get it sorted out happy to sign it but uh, the eight copies i've left are all sealed uh, in the cellophane uh, uh and says of course it's me <laughs> hello Anne. it's it's great to hear from you uh i was uh, Anne was involved i was involved in pirate radio in the in the 1960s and and worked with me uh on radio jackie so love lovely to see you on this webinar Anne. uh thanks eugene thanks gary uh, which catacombs uh, are we able to visit? Uh, you can visit um, uh, Brompton, do occasional visits, and as far as I know, uh, uh, Kensal Green, do occasional visits. Um, again, you'll have to contact, they, they, Kensal Green have got a Friends of Kensal Green Cemetery. Uh, if you contact the Friends of Kensal Green Cemetery, uh, I'm sure they can... Uh, they can tell you what's available uh, once once COVID is open. No, Tony West Norwood. I'm afraid uh, they're they're not they're not very helpful there. The council uh, have never been very helpful at West Norwood. 
uh, yes, Peter, it's eight o'clock uh, and I'm still on. Uh, so, Richard, you're wrong. I haven't been cut off, uh, but I'm sure I will be soon. Uh, Chris says, have you visited the power line tunnels between St. John's Wood and Elstree? No. Um, there are tunnels that run uh, up to uh, the Hyde uh, at uh, ha halfway to Elstree. Um, and in fact, uh, Hyde House had, I think this is true, uh, the lift shaft went a lot deeper than it did now uh, because it, that, that was the, the end of the tunnels that, uh, that extended from the deep level cable tunnels in London uh, and uh, the bottom of the shaft was flooded. Um, and uh, uh, and that never got uh, that never got finished. Um, I think that's true. I'm not sure. Uh, there's just so much more I'd like to tell you about. Please, will you join me for a second go at this? Because I've enjoyed speaking to you. Um, uh, I know it's getting very boring during COVID that we can't uh, get out and uh, 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 and, and, and visit these places, um, but. You know, I think I think we will be soon. Uh, I'd like to to thank. Uh, there's lots of comments coming in. Thanks to uh, uh, to Ian Bruce, uh, Chislehurst. Uh, yes, I think I'll contact you, Ian. You sound interesting. Uh, Liam Kelly, thanks for an interesting talk. Uh, Peter Wright, uh, Paul Naylor. Um, there's lots of. Uh, lots of people coming through now um who who seem to have enjoyed uh part one uh there is just so much more to show you in part two uh including uh, some of the other underground stations uh which i didn't show you um but what you can do is if you want to go back and look at our youtube channel you can actually see this talk all over again uh so it gives you gives you a chance uh to to go through it but please, I want to get rid of these last eight copies. Nick at catford.info. Hey. Write to me and we'll try, we'll try and get rid of them. I'm going to go now. Uh, hey. Hello, Roy. Uh, 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 I, I, I hope you've enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing you again later in the year. Tony hey, hey, hey. to tell me I've got to go. Can, uh, can I be heard? Can you what? Okay. Just thank you very much, Nick, on behalf of all at Subbrit, and we're going to do it again in about four weeks' time. Did you hear that? I heard it, yeah. Everybody happy with that? All right, then. Nick, say your final goodbye. Right. Um, I've now got to leave you. Um, it's uh, I've got to... Uh, we're getting a takeaway today because it's too late for uh, Bernie to cook anything. Uh, so we're getting a takeaway. So I'm going now to downstairs to get the takeaway. Now, I've enjoyed my webinar. Um, so I didn't know what webinars were, but I've enjoyed doing this one. Um, uh, and, and I hope you, you've enjoyed it as well. Thanks. Thanks for your patience, everyone. Bye bye.